Hey Legionnaires and welcome back, we're here with another uh, NTW3 battle for you today and I was, and I was about to say 1212, I was like this is certainly not 1212, we are not in the medieval era, we are in the age of gunpowder and line battles and glorious cavalry and indeed some great cannon volleys as well as Russia is attacking Elao today in this awesome 3v3 that we have set up for you today and we have uh, the 1812 cores I believe here today. Uh, fighting out Elo. We have uh, the, like, the great patriotic armies of Russia. We have uh, Bagavu. I'm definitely going to butcher these names. Uh, Dutorov. And we have... Who else do we have here today? I don't know, but we have French arriving with Poles on this flank over here. And we also have... Do we have two Dutorovs by any chance? We may. You know what? We might indeed have two Dutorovs. Oh no, there's one all the way over here. Here we go. Chuchkov. There we go. Final one. All the way over there. It seems like they're facing at least two French armies and a Polish army here today. Well, at least uh, that is what, exactly what they're facing here today. Um, so it's going to be a, a very interesting one. Sure, I am sure it's not a historical Elal battle. They're just fighting out Elal because there's not... Elal was fought obviously before 1812 and the Poles weren't like a, a notable force. They were... Uh, they may have been some Poles there, but they weren't an entire army like this. Um, but yeah, it looks like we've got a French army defending this village over here. We've got some, uh, some troops garrisoning this area. We've got some, like, sort of Italians here. Looks like, looks like, looks like a lot of Italians, actually. Uh, Italians are, like, sort of Poles. And, oh, already artillery getting taken out. Look at this. This is really, really good. Taking out this building here. Collapsing, killing uh, artillery crew and horses. Uh, and looks like may have taken out a gun as well. So that's huge. I mean, yeah, it looks like the gun's kind of stuck in this building here, actually. So that's not good at all for the French. Losing artillery already. And look at this. Sap is getting just ripped to shreds. So, uh, yeah, this is not good at all for the French. Early uh, losses there. But it seems like they are trying to respond. with They are opening up their own guns over here. Which are also definitely about to fire through their own infantry if they weren't careful there. Looks like we've got some uh, Frenchies moving up. Got some sort of horse artillery here. And they need to be careful they don't just hit their own troops. Just about. Oh, they're actually uh, mounting them up. But yes, if you're enjoying NTW3 on the channel at the moment and would like to see some more, do remember to leave a like, subscribe from around here, and a comment to show your support. As always, guys, it's very much appreciated. Really helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, if you want to join uh, the Discord to get involved in some NTW3 action, the link is down below in the description. This was sent in by a member of my Discord. And. Uh, that is the easiest way to send in your replays to me, as well, if you want to send in replays. You've like, got some good replays. You thought, oh, Pope will really like these. That's the best way to uh, send them in. We've got a, a little bit of a little bit of a skirmish going on over here. Some Strelke now opening up onto the French. Trying to harass. It looks like they're harassing a gun placement over here. I don't think they're going to achieve it. Not entirely sure what those guns are firing at. Maybe the General? Are they firing at Barclay to Tolly? Maybe. Who knows? Um... Or maybe at the infantry that's just standing behind them. Probably the infantry, actually. Yeah, we, I guess Russia probably won't attack until it has its third army here. So we've got to just kind of fast forward, I think, um, until some action does get underway. But I imagine Russia's not going to do any sort of all-out assault until uh, that moment. Though we have now got some French cab moving out. I was literally uh, just about to start to uh, fast forward, but we've got some French cab here. Looks like maybe some... Looks like some Chasseur Cheval, maybe, of some sort. And they're just going to run down these Strelke. And then there's going to be a response here by the Russians. Got some Kusari here. And here we go. The first action underway. And the Russian Kusari is going to probably rout these, uh, yeah, rather French. And the guns from the French are now going to try and put some holes into these uh, Russian, this Russian cab here as well. There's a lot of stuff set up back here. As we can now see the Russian cab coming forward, we can see there's a lot of... French cab set up here, and we've got all sorts. This is a really cool looking unit. Don't know what that is, but it looks cool. A lot of small French here, all in white as well, so they're perfectly camouflaged for uh, today's battle. The Poles as well, set up in their nice lines here. Pol Poland, one of my favorite factions in like the Napoleonic era. I don't know why, I just really like them. I think they, they fight hard this as well. Has fallen to the, enemy. the building's fallen to the enemy. I imagine that is the French occupying the Yep, Ilau itself, so. Uh, we will have to see how the Russians go about sort of like taking this uh, this village. I, we've seen a couple of famous, uh, well, a famous few replays uh, of Elau, and it is pretty tough to take this village. The French fight hard. 
but we will see. We will see what can happen. Yeah, it seems like Russia. I mean, it seems like Russia is going to try and stretch the battle line out as long as possible. As well, he's got a lot of line infantry out here stretching. You can see the French don't seem to have as much uh, in the way of line infantry concentrated here. They've got to put lights on their flank, so that might be a little bit of a weakness. We'll see. Also, see, it seems like I'm seeing a lack of uh, actual French infantry. Seeing a lot of Germans. This could also work in favour of the Russians. Lots of big guns here. Though. This is two artillery, two different artillery batteries, but I mean, this is a lot of artillery pieces here. But uh, yeah, we'll try and we'll fast forward again while we wait on Russia to uh, to arrive, because it still seems like Tuchkov's a little bit of a way off. I imagine Tuchkov's going to get the job of attacking Elal. Probably Dutrov's going to just smash it down the. Oh no, Bagavu will smash it down the center, and then we've got uh, like Dutrov out here will attack. Uh, and try and take the flank. So it looks like Poland's mo moving out a lot of cavalry now to this flank here. So we'll have to see how uh, that goes. Uh, that could obviously be a big threat. I mean, Poland's cavalry is kind of like famous. The Polish lances are like what they're famed for. Got a lot of them here. But we will see. We'll go back to fast forwarding. And just wait to see where, who's going to clash first. Because it seems at the moment, um, we are going to have a bit of a standoff. A bit of an old Mexican standoff. And who's going to move for, forward. I feel like the Russians have kind of got to attack. Don't feel like the French have uh, got to attack. I feel like how Elau set up, the Russians always attack. I mean, France holds the really strong defensive positions. Why would they attack? They just stand here for as long as possible. They, they hold the buildings. Russia wants to come and get them. They gotta come and fight for them. Uh, I am seeing a lot of like a lot of Polish cav moving here and a lack of Russian cav over here. We've got dragoons scattered across this entire army. I've been moving most of my uh, cavalry over here now because uh, yeah, this is not looking this is not looking good to be fair. Uh, you can see now dragoons moving across. I'm seeing even more dragoons moving across and yeah, lots of goo look at this. Wow. Big I was literally about to say like I'd move cavalry to this flank. Rush looks like he's moving an entire cavalry arm over here. We've got lots of Dragoons, lots of uh, even Ullens, we've got uh, more Dragoons, seeing like these uh, Gusari here moving across as well. Yeah, they are making sure Poland is getting kept well out on this side. Seems like France is well moving. Oh, look at this, France doing a lot of cavalry up as well. Oh my gosh, we're going to have a huge clash of cav here on this, uh, on this flank here. This is going to be really, really dangerous. Personally, if I was, uh, yeah, it looks like Poland is going to go all, is going guns. Guns for the wall, but, uh, like pulls the wall here, like all in. This is risky. I'll give them that. Like they are pushing forward. I guess they need to push forward like sooner rather than later if they want to try this to try and catch Russia out because Russia's not got all this cavalry here yet. Um, some of this is still sort of like getting to the positions it wants to. I mean, this infantry here can't form square. I guess that's what they're trying to protect. This one can form square. That's forming up here. And they certainly need to get their infantry involved with the Russians if they can. Try and let shield it from the uh, shield it from the charges and maybe then counter charge with the infantry is what I plan to do. But they've got like a few units of it. Uh, Kutuzov. <laughs> we've got uh, Kutuzov here. He's very close to the front line. I feel like he should be uh, getting back. He otherwise may get caught in uh, a carry fight. Yeah, look at this. This is not looking good. I mean, we're going to see this one form square in about a second. Form square, Russia. Form square and charge. There we go. And the cavalry fight begins along with the infantry, firing into the flanks of the French and the Poles. Not a bad combo, to be fair. France breaking here, and this is looking really good at the moment for Russia. More cavalry charges here. Poland now going into this cavalry. We've got infantry getting stuck in here. I mean, don't know if that was the idea. That's a bit of a risk. Our men, are running, so men breaking. The Russians are broken. The Poles coming in did do just enough. And we now got another Dragoon unit that's been thrown in. To try and stop the Poles. And it's becoming an ugly mess in here. There you go, that's routed. And look at this, massive pushes here by Russia. Russia taking advantage of the, uh, the confusion. We've got some sort of like, uh, cuirassi unit here by the looks of it. I don't know, at least, yeah, it's got a cuirass on it, so it seems like some sort of cuirassi unit. It's holding, it's doing well. Yeah, I mean, they, the more they win, the more the closer they are getting to the uh, to the French lines. 
couple more lances here. But it seems like Russia is going to win this one. I mean, they need to push forward their infantry to Russia to support now the cavalry. That's what I'd be doing. I'd be pushing forward the infantry. You can see France is pushing forward as well. France, I just said that France doesn't have to be the aggressor. Like, they can be the defensive one. But no, look at this. They're pushing forward. You need to be careful here, though. There's overlap in these uh, line infantry to push forward to avoid any sort of friendly fire. But look at this. French infantry here gunning down the Dragoons. Very, very nice. Nearly got these guns, though. That was a little dangerous. Poles over here and the Russians, you know, is still actually kind of even in cavalry. Um, in the end. They actually, the Polish actually did kind of have a bit of success out here against the uh, the Russians. With some, uh, with some lancers. But yeah, no, they are... Uh, it's kind of... I, get, I feel like... I feel like neither side came out on that really on top. Like I said, both sides kind of inflict damage. Already got infantry breaking here, though. Look at this. And France has got infantry firing into the backs of his own men. Stop doing this, France. Get your troops into the front line. Have one line of infantry. Or hold fire. One or the other. But do not do this. We're getting volleys. The Russians are coming. Fight for your emperor, or die trying. I mean, not, it's not really your emperor because a lot of you are Germans, so I guess you don't really care whether you win or lose. I, you probably want to survive, so I guess you want to win. And I can hear cavalry charging. France gonna just charge some, like some sort of like goons, look like some like Berenberg goons, all the way through his own li line infantry. This seems like is a not a very good idea because it's gonna be a slow charge. They go for the guns, I guess. And this is going to be painful because they're not going to get shot because they're retreating. So you can get shot by friend and foe. Well, they could do. Looks like they may have held fire. French guy there with minimal casualties. French infantry still breaking, or I should say German infantry still breaking. The French don't. I don't know really what, the, what France is committing actually out of his own infantry. Um, these are, oh, they might be like Polish infantry maybe? Official Legion, we've got like more attack. I don't know, it doesn't seem like there's much in the way of French infantry, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I guess maybe these guys in white might be, but they honestly may not be either. But Russia is pushing forward, uh, France is pushing forward towards Russia once again. And look at this gun emplacement here, look at this, this is like a, what, five gun uh, artillery like unit, that's huge. Let's have a volley. It's a six pounder as well. Pretty nice. Oh, he's gonna get friendly fire. Oh dear, that's brutal. How could you do that? Just hit your own like in oh, your own cavalry. Yeah, that's not gonna go so well. That's gonna get routed pretty quickly. Now we got some uh SARS coming in. You need to be careful with their artillery. It's firing into load of uh, cavalry, friend and foe. Look at this, Russians like really pushing on the flank here. And they can form square. And they have done so. And they're now threatening, but they're going to have to retreat because Poland is now pushing forward. And look at this horde of Polish infantry. Polish infantry is not necessarily that great though. So there is hope here. And then look at this, like another huge push out here by uh, France. Now onto the left, we have a lot of cavalry moving on this side. Lots of, uh, looks like actual French cavalry. We've got Dragoons. We've got, well, they might be some more Germans, actually. But we have got French Dragoons here. Well, actually, they may be Italian Dragoons. It's all decent, though. It's just here. Yeah, more Italian infantry. Yeah, it looks like a lot more Italian sort of stuff. Where is Tuchkov? Is he one of these? Like, he's got to be here somewhere. Tuchkov's now taking the center. I see. So it seems like most of the fight's going to happen outside the village. No one wants to fight for Elo. What a bizarre fight we're having. Look at this. The Lion battle continues.
But yeah, big, big push over here by the French. And the Russians have nothing here. So, like, France doesn't know it's pushing into uh, emptiness, I guess. Maybe they think there's another core out here. Um, I don't know what they think, but there is just nothing out here. And France is just, yeah, able to push really hard. I mean, they've got some one unit of cavalry. I feel like the Russians are a bit short on cavalry now. They've used a lot for pushes. I mean, they've got some, uh, like, another cavalry unit here. Uh, they've got some dragoons in the back. Some more of uh, those Tsars, but still. I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough not to protect both sides. This flank over here could do with some, uh, those dragoons as well to protect against the, the Poles. But yeah, doing really well against the, the French infantry at the moment. Like, this Russian line should really push forward. Try and do some damage. I know it's probably scared of the... Polish cap, but we should just push forward, try and push for the, like, push this flank, and then turn the French, uh, well, well, now the French and Polish right. Turn that. Because Poland's making up, looks like Poland's making up the majority of this line of here. And this is really risky. <laughs> Got, like, light infantry here. These boys look pretty damn fine, I won't lie. Russia looks pretty awesome, I think, in his, uh, in his uniform. The 1812 Russia looks amazing, in my opinion. They look really good. We're not going to see a volley, are we? They're out of range. Oh, yeah, definitely out of range. The guns won't be there in a minute. They're going to set this 12... These 12 bounders are very much in range. I feel like it's a bit overkill. But yeah, France over here is still struggling. These, like, German units are just not having a good time. I'm not quite sure what actually these guys are. I'm gonna say some sort of German unit. But I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. If they're blobbing up here, this is gonna make it easy targets. But yeah, I mean why is this why is uh, like Dutrov here not pushing hard? Like, he should just push hard. Poland's already giving ground as well, they're not happy with uh, the situation, but look at this, France is really wide now. Really, really wide. I don't know if he doesn't realize or if he's just like, just wants to try and get as wide as possible. But like, Russia can see this. Like, if we can see this, Russia can see this. Uh, and Russia needs to like react. They've got dragoons here that look like they're rushing over. They've got more like cavalry here. I mean, Bagavu here needs to be moving his uh, like his uh, hussars as well. Like, they need to be getting ready. So that's the next big engagement. If they lose that fight, Russia, um, they're really short on cavalry. I mean, they shouldn't lose that fight. I mean, yeah, France has lots of cavalry here as well. I can hear something charging. Oh, we have a uh, look at this. Russian hussars pushing forward. Going to try to take out these guns. They've been abandoned as the French retreat. And a general's been killed. Oh, Poland's general's just been shot as well. I presume by an artillery piece. That is rough. That is really rough. And they've taken out the, uh, the gun, as we expected. See, that's not good at all. I mean, now these, uh, these hussars might as well push on and see what French infantry they can take out. Or not. They could just get shot instead. Oh, dear. Poles are seeing them off. Polish grenadiers are seeing them off. Excellent, boys. Excellent. Keep it up. There you go. They are dealt with. Very, very good. Yeah, Russia just needs to keep pushing forward now because I think France and Poland have had their... They've had their little taste of a uh, battle, and they're, they're probably going to start thinking about retreating maybe to towards Ilau and to uh, to other areas. I imagine they're not going to want to like make another offensive. Russia's got a pretty good position. They've got a good line. Artillery interspersed in between their lines. They're a bit short on cavalry, though. Oh, Russia. That's my only. That's my only concern. Like said, they're a bit short on cavalry. With France going behind, like here, like. I mean, these are isolated caveats now. I mean, if uh, Russia forgets about them, that's a bit of a risk for artillery and for generals. But uh, if he goes and takes them out pretty soon, Russia, he could uh, just bring down that advantage that France has. They still have an advantage, but it won't be as big. And here we go. Finally, Dutrov advances. Don't know why he really retreated in the first place. go. June's coming in. Rousing these uh, infantry. And 
look at this. I mean, Russia's just able to push on hard. I mean, if they can uh, get around this building, maybe, like, it's this building, they could just turn the flank of the French again. It looks like the French maybe trying to defend this road. Maybe they're going to try and march down the road to, uh, to, fr to safety, get back to Elau. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, these Dragoons have a field day. There you go, yeah, Dragoons dealt with. Uh, oh, they need to be careful, these Russians just firing on their own Dragoons. Gotta be careful. Look, you so do so much damage to your own men. Your own men's morale is just shoot them. Hold fire. Get your dragoons out of here. But the French general here. Hopefully he doesn't get sniped like his uh, Polish ally. Look at these defeated allied troops for the French. They need some stern French blood and uh, men to help them. Maybe some old guard. They would do. I bet they're wishing there was some old guard li uh, lying around ready to uh, help them. Best, of, best I've seen so far is Italians. That's not, that's not a high bar. Uh, I'm joking, Italians. You fought hard in this war. But, uh, but yeah, I don't, know, I don't know who we got here. We got another French channel here just chilling. I presume there are French troops still in this village. I, I honestly think, um, I honestly think they're not going to push this, uh, this, this village. Why would they? Like the French are on the run out here. Just keep pushing. Russia just needs to push hard. And we're going to fast forward because uh, it seems like Russia's taking his merry old time in deciding what he's going to do. They're not even... Maybe they are going to push now for the village. Maybe they feel like they scared the, the French off in the um, in the field. They're now going to push hard over here. I can see a lot of troop movement looking like it's going towards the road. And then it could come down, I guess. Maybe that's what we're going to do. There's a lot of... Wow, yeah, there's a lot of infantry moving in this direction. This looks like it's Tuchkov and it's uh, Begavu here. Both moving in that direction. It looks like Dutrop's going to get the job of just dealing with the remains of the French out here. Which is dangerous because there's a lot of Poles still. Poland barely engaged. Um, Byrus Cavalry. Like his infantry like arm is still very healthy. But uh, we will see. We will see what happens. But uh, yeah, French French guns just getting run down by infantry here. It's always good to see. But it uh, seems like... Yeah, it seems like the French are lucky, you can see from what we can see here. France is trying to, like, get back into maybe this forest line back here. And then, like, maybe uh, get back to his original lines. And then all the way back to Ilau. Who knows? Who knows? But as you can see as well, the French cab in the back is still lingering there. They need to be careful. There's actually uh, line infantry here. Why is Dutrop sending some line infantry just back here? I don't know. These guys can't even form square. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why he sent these guys back here. Maybe to die. Uh, he's just sent some... Uh, some infantry to die. <laughs> Poor guys. Um, I mean, I guess maybe if they can get one volley off, maybe that'd be okay. No, not even that. Where are you going? Where are you going, random infantry? We will never know. But we are about to see maybe a cavalry fight back here. Looks like Dragoons are getting very close to, uh, yeah, these guys here. And we're going to see a cavalry fight. This could go really... If this doesn't go right for Russia, this could put them in a bit of trouble. Oh, that's not a good matchup. The next, the next one. Russia's losing this fight as well, actually. Here. Oh, I don't know. They're, they're turning around. And another French cavalry unit joins the fight. Russia's joining the fight. Oh, we could go. Oh, Russia's broken. Oh, France could be in real. Uh, Russia could be in real trouble. Well, France has been broken though, so there we go. Russia's reinforcements, this Gusari and his uh, like low light infantry are like have their did the job. Yeah, it seems like oh, look at this now. France is gonna push forward. Looks like he's going for these guns here. And these uh, six pounder horse artillery are running for their lives. I mean these uh, Russians here should be getting ready. If they can just like put a few volleys in. Hit these, uh, yeah, there you go. Hit these French cavalry. There you go. They're scaring them off. Yeah, so I mean, there's another fr uh, Russian gun here that they can just take out. This is a uh, 12 pounder. That's in a bit of danger. Russia pushing up has left gaps in his line. And he's going to lose a couple of guns here. They're going to try and set up, maybe try and set up these guns and try and fire and support the uh, the guns that are going to be lost. Can they get a volley off in time, I wonder? 
I doubt it. We're going to see. This one might. Oh, this one is definitely going to. Oh, blue full cavalrymen off their horses. Oh, my gosh. But it won't be enough. I don't think. No. The Russians are broken. It wasn't quite enough. It's a real shame. And they may be able to get these other guns back here, but there are uh, dragoons protecting them. Well done there by Dutrov. He's keeping his uh, guns well protected. Yeah, this French cav here is in a real rough spot. Probably he's going to break pretty much instantly. Here we go. There we go. Routed. Very easily. And now we can see Russia is pushing into the village. To take on Elau. The beast that is Elau. And we've got... Yeah, we do in fact have battalions here already. Battalions and... Maybe some... I don't know what these are. Maybe like... Might, might be Italians as well. I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. I'm terrible with uniforms, it would seem. When I don't have the uh, the image, like... Um, I have like the uh, unit information next to it. No idea. These are definitely Italians. So they're like blue I can recognize. A mile off. I feel like these guys are not getting clear shots with this wreckage in front of them. But who knows? Maybe they are. But yeah, Russia's now pushing on in force. Have they got any grenadiers? They do. They have grenadiers. With their fancy old hats. Look at them. Lots of... Actually, they're grenadiers as well. Are these all grenadiers? They are. These are lifeguard grenadiers. These aren't any old grenadiers. These are lifeguard grenadiers. Two scops bringing up the big guns. This is going to be interesting then. Very interesting to see how they... Uh, how Rush goes about this. Will they be really aggressive? Or will they try and just... Well, I feel like Grenadiers are... You just want to get into the mix. You don't want to be wasting their uh, their skills in line battles. But who knows? What have we got over there? It's a sapper unit. It's like an Italian sapper unit. I feel like these guys are outgunned. But I'm not sure. They look awesome though. Look at them. Camouflage ready for winter combat. Oh my gosh. They're right. Do not look at their eyes. Their eyes are like they're just, they're just like devils or something like that. They're looking glorious. I like their uniforms. And here we go. We've got French Cav Russia now again. They're going to try and uh, maybe go for the Russian guns. Or they're just going to come for this infantry. There we go. It goes Russia's ca uh, cavalry once again. And they've broken the, uh, broken the French Cav that time. This uh, Italian, Italian Dragoon here is going to get in though. go the French have been broken but I mean one of the uh, one of the line for to get broken it's a small trade-off I think like Francis just wasted his cavalry advantage there but yeah here we go Poland's gonna come forward once again and Russia is now actually going into combat down here in the village he's rushed in with his uh, grenadiers as I'd hoped in go the grenadiers and it's scaring off all these Italians here really nice Taking a building. Oh, oh, that's just ruined. I was all the way over there doing stuff. Okay, let's go back over here. Here we go. Doing their bit. And the Russians are probably going to break. I don't know. Some of these grenadiers are going to break. But, I mean, the grenadier lifeguards are still alive. They've done their bit. Yeah, one of the grenadiers has broken. The other one may break. But they've done a lot of damage to the French position here. I think we're in, there's a Grenadier unit in here. Yeah, there is. There's a Grenadier unit in this building here fighting the uh, like Italian Grenadiers or Guard unit that they have there. They have scared off all of the oh, Grenadiers. They may return, but uh, just not at the moment. And here we go. Tushkov bringing around and Bagabu bringing around more infantry. And look at this. This is a massive, like, a massive charge here by Russia. Going in against Poland with his infantry. Really good idea. Ro uh, Poland is not so great in combat, but Russia is very, very good. And look at this. Poland should be just rushing these guns. Don't just stand in front of the guns and just accept death, Poland. That's a terrible idea. France pushing forward as well. 
Poland has the cavalry here as well. He should really be trying to get around the uh, the Russian lines, trying to stretch them. He's the final like cavalry units on the battlefield. I think, anyway. There might be some other ones, but I think that's it. We go Rush going in, breaking Poland almost instantly. Poland remember, Poland has no general, so his infantry's morale is probably awful. And the, yeah, like, just like that, Poland's gone. Poland, I don't feel like Poland should have been aggressive there. Like, we saw what happened the first time. Poland's infantry is pretty terrible. Look at this, Russia's taking this building. Has he taken it? Yeah, he now mans it. Okay, there you go. So already, like, they've got a really good foothold in Elau. And France is on the retreat. France is running. Lots of, uh, lots of French troops. Well, I say French troops. These are definitely not French troops. Prepare to face the Russian horde. Death and honor, boys. Death the and honor. Fatigued, sir, and must rest away. They might actually face a volley here first. Oh, who's going to fire first? Surely the French, come on. No, Russia is already going to have a volley ready. No? Oh no, there you go. France volley. Why well, do I feel like the Russian one's going to be scarier? Oh, look at this. Russia is taking the volleys like jam. It's not even firing back. They don't even need to, that's why. And already more melee combat going on down here. I don't think these are grenadiers though. No, these aren't grenadiers. No, none of these are grenadiers. France doing well though, holding on here just about. He's gonna have to throw in more troops though, because France will not hold forever. Although these troops won't hold. I don't know actually, you know what they rallied. Italians here though. Not looking so hot. I mean, they're getting shot in the back, actually. That's definitely not good. Any man can say that. And they've got another building here to take over the, the, uh, the um, Russians. I don't know why I was going to call them the Italians. The Italians hold it. Duchkov really, uh, Duchkov and Bagavu here really spilling around. Looks like Duchkov is kind of mopping up what's left of the uh, the Prus um, Polish and French forces here. Keep the volleys going, boys. For the Tsar. He will be proud of us. There you go. French still breaking here. This is not looking good. Lots of Italians are running the wrong way. Looks like some conscripts in the Royal Guard. I think they are. They're breaking. Now we've got Russians spilling in. Is the life? Is this the lifeguard unit? Is grenadier unit? The uh, here are the lifeguard grenadiers. Oh boy. These guys only lost eight men. They've been in a few combats as well. They're hard to kill. Ryan still has some cavalry back here. Maybe the last throw of the dice. Oh, Russia needs to be careful with his general. Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh no. And Russia's lost a general. And there you go. Duchkov's dead. Uh, he's just run over some stakes and got himself killed. That's why you've always got to be, a uh, be aware where you're moving your generals to. So that might affect the uh, the combat. So you can see Russia's now breaking in a few areas. These are all Tuchkov's men. Tuchkov got some uh, Dragoons here as well. Needs to be very, very careful. Luckily, like, Barkley the Tolly is way out here. He's very, very safe. What I'm a bit concerned about is that these uh, guardsmen are part of Tuchkov's corps. They may be in trouble. What's in this building? Oh, all sorts. There's absolutely all sorts in that building. Here we go. Russian cavalry going in, though. Rushing in. Going after, uh, well, all the, all the French infantry can find. I mean, they got a really nasty volley in their face there, though. They break some French infantry, maybe. They yeah, broke something with French, but I'm not sure what it is. Dutrov looks like he's uh, trying to cut off the Poles from retreating to... Uh, Elau, as Poland can see that France is in a bit of a disorder, but to be honest, Russia's running low. And with the loss of uh, Tuchkov, that's not a real big blow to Russia's infantry hopes. There we go. And they should win this fight. They're piling in the infantry, though. It's always a risk. More infantry spilling around here. Russia just seems to have 
I say he's, they had a, a shortage. I mean, I was about to say they just have endless. I was about to just like be a hypocrite there. But they do seem to have like, I look over in another area and there's like a couple more infantry. And it's like, oh, rush is fine. I mean, yeah, like there, for instance, it's just two just randomly standing there. They need to move them forward. These guardsmen, though, they are exhausted. Combat loses slightly. That's not good. What are they fighting? Around the corner? Are they charging? They've been fighting this cab. Why are they just falling square? Are they breaking? No. These grenadiers here might want to go and support them. Support their guardsmen. I mean, these guns are just stood here. They should take these guns out. With these grenadiers. But apparently not. Apparently they're not, they're not worth taking out. France is still holding this area here. I feel like Russia could have won this uh, line battle here and just charged them. Like it's done so many times. Just charged the Italians. Russia looks like he's taking this building. Uh, the Grenadier is now mounting the balcony. Overlooking it. Be able to fire down into this combat. And Russia is actually starting to turn this combat around. It looks like any of morale. Hard to say. Russia is uh, trying to position the French. Oh, they hold this but I forgot the French holding this building as well. They're fighting around it? Oh, they're fighting like outside it. Find some like, Italians here. In the building? Oh, yeah, the Italians are still in the building. All right. Well, this one could be interesting. These are all, like, just line infantry units. That's not, like, the greatest thing to storm the building with. And it doesn't look like it will be enough. This could be this is going to be really close thing. And there you go. Russia has won this fight here. Uh, he's beat by the cab and the infantry. He needs to take out this gun. And the guards have survived. Here we go, big in infantry push here. Like I said, they should have just rushed this. They have won that fight and they just pushed the other one. They should be okay, I think. But Poland is starting to get a Poland's starting to get squeezed in. He's got nowhere to go now. He's got Dutrov to one side. He's got Tuchkov and Bagavil on the other, really. And there you go, Tuchkov's going in, going after these guns. Poland is also uh, setting his grenadiers, trying to do his bit. Poland's, uh, Poland's army is in pretty much tatters. Like, it, there's a decent amount of it left, but I don't think it's going to hold for any amount of time with no general army losses also coming in and just exhaustion. Yeah, I've not seen, like, any proper, like, French infantry units. Unless some of these are, like, proper French infantry units in white form. I doubt it. Though. France never really just be white. It's a hat, uh, unless it's like Italian and stuff like that. Some random guy just got shot there. Yeah, there's not much. There's been a bit of. I don't even think there's been any like French caviar, to be honest. We've got a line for Drea pushing forward. We've got a volley into these Frenchies. A cab going off. Oh, we got French cab here. This is the last Tsar of French cab. And it charged him to the conform square. That's unfortunate. You don't know what conform square and what can't nowadays. And NTW3. So that's just unlucky. But it, it was probably should have guessed that these two units have just got left way out on their own. That they conform square. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, you can see here. Now we've got the guards there firing, doing their bit. And the French still hold this, this building. building. That's pretty impressive. The building's falling to the enemy. Oh, the French must have just jumped in it. Yeah, they got a. Uh, they got some like random infantry going in there. But yeah, you can see here Russia. Oh, Poland actually being aggressive. Taking his grenadiers. This he might win this fight. He has won that fight. Well done to him. It looks like Rush is going to respond to his own in. There it is. Yeah, breaking the uh, the poles. And as I and yeah, Rush is just taking this building. 
So now they hold most of Elal. They have like just this small little section left to take. Polonus is going to try and set up some guns. The horse artillery here and try maybe try and put some volleys into the fr uh, into the uh, Russians. He may put them into the French. You never know. I was about to say that. Uh, he may just decide, you know what? Change sides while we have the chance. Russia may forgive us. But no, they won't. Russia wants to annex Poland. These French need a retreat. Like, they are out, like, outmaneuvered. As they are at every turn at the moment. Russia's trying to duel with some infantry down there. A general has been killed as well. Another Russia. A Kutuzov now has run into stakes. It's the same stakes as well. That, uh, look, you can see the two spots where they've char charged into each other. Charging the stakes. Watch your stakes, Russia. Good thing it's the end of the battle, and Russia's kind of already quite sharp. Look at this, the guard getting hit hard by artillery, I think. A Polish artillery, I think. This guy's exhausted. They're going to break on impact, I imagine. Careful, Russia, you're hitting your own man. Here we go, though, the slowest charge in history. And I imagine Poland will be able to, like, scare them off. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Poland, you know, breaking a few areas. Wow, yeah, actually, wow. But Poland's breaking everywhere. And the Allies have captured a building. I presume, yeah, this is this building here. So they no longer hold Elau. Do the French. Actually, no, they still do. They hold this building here, apparently. I think. Well, unlike the map, it says they hold this building. Is it still being fought over? No, I think that's a bug. I'm not sure. But uh, there's a few units of French like out here that just need mopping up. But yeah, that is basically the battle. I'm going to fast forward because uh, I do not want to watch the Russians just chase down random units uh, at normal time anyway. The French are just throwing this, whatever they have in. The Russians have won. It was a pretty good one. It was a pretty interesting battle. Um, I feel like we it was... Killed their generals. Oh, there you go. General's been now killed. That's what was break. it. That had to be killed. Um, I think... Um, it was decided, certainly when the French pushed forward. The French had... I, I feel like the French had never had an advantage. The men are fatigued, sir. Which sounds awful, because the French usually have the advantage. But, yeah, the French were playing with the uh, Victor's, uh, like, Russian corps. And Eugene's Russian corps. Um, which are, like, not got a lot of French units in it. You can see it's a German one and an Italian one. And we have the uh, uh, Poniatowski as well uh, for the Poles. Um, so, yeah, I feel like with no French troops, they had no, like, real advantage. Like, the French allied troops are just a bit crappy. But, yeah, well done to, uh, to Kronk, to Oli, and to Sol Beresen, who uh, were playing as the as the Russians. Um, I'm not entirely sure which one of these was sent in. It was sent in by uh, Casual, who was uh, um, one of, like, was what his name is on uh, Discord. So that's what I'll go by. I don't know what his name is on uh, on here. Um, but yeah, so well done to uh, to all the uh, Russian players, and well done to all the French players as well. They had a rough time, but I mean, they got some pretty good kills, higher than some of the Russian players. So uh, yeah, I mean, these two did not, oof, rough there, but Eugene did pretty well. Um, but yeah, there are the unit stats, 271 kills for a six-pounder, wow. Um, some pretty good kills here. Um, but yeah, there you go, if you want to have a look at them. Kutuzov up there with 64 kills, wow, impressive for him. Uh, but there you go, guys. If you enjoyed seeing that into Doom 3 action, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.